Gotcha. So, actually, I, I uh, Scott's uh, vintage uh, there, that paper would have been with him because I was actually not a member of the MBER until two years ago. Uh, so my actual first MBER paper would have been more in the 18 thousands uh, than, <laughs> than that, um, which is probably just as well because if I had joined when Scott had joined, I would uh, have made that top 10 list of most working papers uh, where making Duran Ashmaglu kind of a minnow in that field um, <laughs> and done my, and done a wonderful job of bringing down uh, all of Glenn's uh, citation uh, benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Although one of those papers would have actually been possibly the most read paper in economics that I wrote many years ago on um, classic rejected articles. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's some balance there. But I must say, I, I, having watched that field and, and participated in the study of the publishing process in economics, I, I got to hand it to Glenn. Uh, most of us whine about how long it takes for things to get published. During that process, Glenn actually ran more regressions to understand it, so kudos to him on that. But I think actually that brings a very critical question, as he already raised, about the role of the NBER working paper series. Uh, for whatever we want to talk about, it is now in a, because the publication process has slowed so much uh, for various reasons, and in many respects is is, uh, is, is a case to be made that it's becoming increasingly irrelevant for the actual dissemination of, of economic knowledge, at least amongst researchers in the United States and Canada. Uh, we should think very carefully about this existing initial role of the NBR working paper series. Obviously, as Jim pointed out, that it was initially conceived to solve a lag problem itself. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it should stay static, even as that pro problem has actually, in fact, grown. So, um, let's, so the, basically, these peer review lags are what motivate me here. Um, uh, and, and moreover, there's an issue now. The working papers are not themselves peer reviewed. And it's something we should actually think about and, and be concerned about because, uh, you know, I had one example that appeared in a uh, discussion we were doing of a paper yesterday, these NBER working papers are of course being cited and, and used as evidence for things like critical su US Supreme Court cases. So it should concern us that we are only using as the selection process the club, that is you have a, uh, achieved membership for the NBER, as opposed to things that would improve the papers. And, you know, in my experience, having had even several of these, and I think everybody has, uh, we know there are situations in which we've put out NBR working papers and they have been improved by the publication process and other things as well. So we shouldn't shy away from that. Um, you know, some are discussed at conferences. We do have some processes. I suspect there's another effect as well. I think some people may well delay their NBR working paper putting it out there precisely because they know that's going to get the hit on the email and it's going to get the hit on the downloads. So there's some delay. So maybe people will submit it after first review or something like that. But again, if that's occurring, that's damaging our desire to get the knowledge and the information out quickly as well and to balance those things. Um, so does publication mean anything? So, so um, the other theme I want to bring into that is now, you know, we've got 20,000 working papers. There was some attempt here to, to understand, you know, where they're going and who's downloading and things like that, but albeit extremely imperfectly. Uh, you know, a lot of being downloaded from outside uh, the United States. I, I must admit, when I went back to Australia after my PhD 20 years ago, the first thing I was told to do was subscribe to the NBR working paper series. It was a significant expense. <laughs> they used to arrive, by the way, on paper in the little yellow ones, individually. <laughs> they were all sent individually. No one sort of stacked it up and sent me one a week even, you know, one packet a week. They all arrived individually, which made it quite an expensive deal. Fortunately, the internet came along and solved my particular problem. But, you know, we want to keep track of these things. You know, what happens when you submit a working paper? You can actually revise them. 
but you know, some of these papers have been out there for a while. Do we want to keep the previous versions on? Do we want to identify where they've gone and other things like that? So if you look here, I, I picked a, a, an old, uh, you know, a, a four-year-old paper um, just at, at random just to show you what the site looks like because you probably haven't sort of thought about it uh, that much. But if you actually look here, so we've got, the, we've got the abstract and the number and the publication date, we've got a PDF download and we've got an email, that's all fine. Um, uh, they've removed the uh, how long it will take you to download at 28.8k modem speed. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be there. <laughs> that used to be very relevant, um, so that's good. But, um, and they've got some, some other uh, record keeping things, including where it's been published, but you'll notice there's no link to that published paper. It's just the, the publisher that you would have to delve back into Google to find it. And then we have the very Amazon-like users who downloaded this paper also downloaded something as well, which is, which is clearly an excellent feature. But in a, in a sense, and then I compared this to things like Archive and other things that have been building up as repositories elsewhere, and actually it's at the state of the art. I mean, this is, a, this is as good as these things get. But actually, if you were to pass it by any of our you know, computer science uh, uh, friends or anyone designing something for the dissemination of information or, you know, Yelp or Amazon itself, this is uh, way behind the times, okay? You know, you would have things like different versions of the working paper. You'd have links to all these other things. You'd have ability to share on social media for whatever uh, that is worth, but it matters. Um, you would have other things, comments. Even if you were going to have comments and reviews and other things from NBR uh, associates only, you could have those things. Um, you know, we'd have to, it's at least worth, our ask, worth asking the question of whether we should have that. Um, you would have then <laughs> links to the, why, where was this paper cited? <laughs> would also be useful. Why isn't that being tied? You can think of all of those things, and I've listed a few of these options here. But what I want to just harp on right at the beginning is the issue of open oh, access. Oh, oh, right towards the end. Sorry? Yes. You only have a few more minutes. Hi. Okay, there you go. Okay. I'll, I'll survive. Okay, very good. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, not there. Yes. Well, it's my last slide. It's okay. okay. Um, so, is, is the issue of open access. Um, you may not realize it. Um, even, I believe the Sinesta Hotel here is within the NBER remit. You can get free working papers. Anyone who stays at the Sinesta can access any working paper for free. <laughs> but move out of that, <laughs> move out of the protected zone, which is most of the world, um, you, uh, you have to pay, and it's $5 for a download and $10 for a physical paper, and that you have to do that. It is well worth uh, uh, asking ourselves if that is a, at all a good idea. Um, that is certainly away from trends and not what you'd expect. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure Jim can tell us about how much it is funding, and let's face it, if it's funding the infinite salary we have to pay Rob Shannon, then screw the rest of the world. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we can include conference, comments, conference discussions, why are, why are those hidden? Maybe they can be brought out. We can have links to data sets. We can have different versions. We can have links to published works. We have links to press and summaries. This stuff is getting out there. The one thing I have noticed, and I, not everybody, because I'm a blogger, I pay attention to this, when that working paper email goes out, the summaries of those papers mm -hmm. appear in the New York Times, in the Washington Post, Vox.com, and a whole lot of other blogs immediately. Having done this myself, I got called by 10 journalists uh, the day uh, recently the uh, working paper of mine came out. That has an effect. Maybe we should be keeping track of that uh, impact as well just for argument's sake, just to, to know that these things are being reported correctly and things like that. Citations. And then the final thing that I want to leave you with is regarding peer review. So NBR working papers exist outside the publication process. That means they don't get peer review. They don't get editing. Scott will laugh at that because clearly my own work would benefit from that. Um, uh, <laughs> they don't get any of the, you know, things like typesetting, other 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 things that would enhance the working papers, uh, either in readability or other things like that. They just basically come straight from the computer of the, uh, of the researcher, straight out into to press. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, it's uh, not high in transaction costs, but we should at least ask ourselves what we are losing. And I can imagine, you know, for editing, you could probably claim a fraction of 
uh, a fee from people's research accounts elsewhere to fund that sort of thing. With regard to peer review, why is the first round of a review done at some random journal only to be done again? Is there a mechanism we could set up that the first round was done internal to the NBER with those reports anonymously made available to any journal that you might submit it afterwards? Nobody would end up doing more reports, no one would end up, and we would, wouldn't, we would start to do something to address the slowdown in the publication process rather than just sit there and watch it happen. Thanks. Okay. Okay.